church this morning. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling good. Good morning. It's nice to have some sun. Come on, we're going to worship God this morning. We believe that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen. We're going to declare that this morning, wherever we are right now. Come on, we sing. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When darkness falls, you won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh my God will never fail. No, oh my God will never fail. I'm gonna see victory. I'm gonna see victory.
together to pray it over one another. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children.
obviously it's going out on Sunday morning so welcome to church I just want to say um, it's great to be back with you and sharing with you um, how are you all are you all okay have you had a good week have you had a good lockdown have you had a good um, season um, we've all been through different things haven't we um, I know just in the last few weeks obviously I'm on um, holiday from um, from my, my job in school um, we've had a few days holiday away it was literally just three days um, away but it was really lovely um, it didn't quite make up for our three weeks in Florida that we're supposed to have um, but never mind it was still lovely uh, totally enjoyed it um, have you been enjoying any meals out you know on this um, eat out to help out scheme that we've been having well we had a lovely meal out last night uh, early wedding anniversary meal um, it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow and um, because we are not stingy but we wanted to take benefit of the, the deal that's going on we had our anniversary meal last night a uh, lovely meal just down at the coast and it, it was just really nice so that's what we've been up to um, I'm just bringing you a, a message today now the last time I spoke I said this would be really short and uh, it turned out to be twice as long as I was allowed to have and so this time I'm determined to keep it short it will just be short um, but I really hope that um, I can speak to you through the word today um, I've had a busy day I don't know what your day's been like um, I've been out on two coffee dates with two friends two separate friends um, and so I just got home and thought I'm gonna bring this word now but it's really warm outside in fact it's showed up on the cars 26 degrees so I've got kinky hair I've had a mask on all day so my makeup's all come off um, I just look like a bit of a wreck but never mind all that aside um, I'm going to bring a word today that I really hope will be of some encouragement to you um, so here we go um, as we come in into a brand new season kind of a season um, probably and quite hopefully that will start to get back to some kind of normality um, as far as life goes and normality as far as um, church goes now obviously a little bit different and a different kind of normal to what we've been used to but hopefully over the next month or so um, we'll be able to gather together again in some shape or form which we will let you all know but what I thought today, as this will be my um, kind of my last message um, during the lockdown period, which is obviously lifting and, and getting better. Um, I'm going to speak, and my title today is Lessons from Lockdown. Okay? Lessons from Lockdown. I think every situation that we go through, whether it's good or not so good, if we can learn lessons from them, it's, that's good, isn't it? You know, um, and so I'm just going to have a, I've got a, a couple of lessons, three, well, three lessons that I'm just going to quickly go over today and, um, and, and things that maybe I've learned and you might have learned different things during these, these months that have, have gone, you know, between March and, and now, the end of, towards the end of August. Um, lockdown was a word that probably we'd never even used before, really, um, until now, had we? Um, and lockdown, we all know what lockdown is because it's been a period where we weren't allowed to do what we would normally do freely and, uh, and sometimes maybe take for granted as well. Um, lockdown came totally out of the blue. It was unexpected. Um, I remember seeing um, back at the beginning of the year some footage on the news on the television about um, China and, and the country going into lockdown and thinking, oh, thank goodness that's not happening to us. But little did we know within a period of weeks we would be following uh, um, following suit and, and in the same situation. Um, so it kind of came unexpectedly. Um, it's been a little bit unknown, hasn't it? It's been a bit of a, a one of those situations where we've never known it before. It's been different. For some people it's been a scary time, a bit worrying. Um, which is natural because it's been so different um, and you know what? we can choose really whether we can let lockdown leave us fearful or we can use what we've been through to strengthen us 
and to build us up and that's church what I'm hoping to do today just to go over a couple of things um, that hopefully will um, build us up and that we can learn from from the situation that we've been through okay um, every situation that we do go through in life um, it can either it kind of helps build us and mould us into the type of person that we are doesn't it um, whether it's for good or bad but um, let's hope that what we've been through will change us for good okay um, I've got in capitals on my, my paper here don't right in capitals don't let what we've been through leave a negative effect on us okay um, I think that's important I do think that's important um, and then I've got in capitals but okay I love a good but but let's learn from it you know actually we might feel that we can actually end up being grateful for the situation that we've been through and some of us are still actually going through um, and you might say what <laughs> grateful are you kidding me are you having me on here um, yeah it's it's been tough and um, you know there, there are hard seasons that we go through and I think this has be, been a hard season but it's through the hard seasons that we grow, isn't it? Um, you know, we become stronger, we grow through the seasons that have been the most difficult. When we're going through easy times and an easy um, season in life, we just kind of sail through it, don't we? And, and we don't really change because of that. But when we're going through something that's been difficult or um, kind of unusual and a little bit hard, that's the time that we get strengthened and we grow um, and hopefully become better, you know, better people. You know, when, when everything's been stripped away and we were down most vulnerable, that's actually when we become dependent more on God. And I would say probably this time has made us all become kind of more dependent on God um, than we normally would have been. Probably, um, I've got down here, um, one hundred percent dependable. Okay, um, our grandson Caleb he keeps saying that's one hundred percent amazing. That's one hundred percent awesome. Uh, and and I, I think you know that we've become one hundred percent, or I hope we have, dependent on God. You know, because it's when we become totally, totally dependent on Him, that's when He can prove to us. That really, at the end of the day, he's all we really need. He is. He's all we really need. When everything is being stripped back, um, he is the one that we need. Okay. Um, so I've got three lessons. Three lessons that um, I hope we've learned during this period of lockdown. The first lesson, and this this applies to me, and so I'm I'm actually kind of speaking from personal experience as I'm giving these lessons. Um, but I'm sure they will apply to you too. Number one, first lesson, learn to appreciate what we have. Okay, so if you're taking notes, that's number one, learn to appreciate what we have. You know, instead of thinking about what we feel we might have lost, be thankful for the things that we actually have. Because, you know, we can look back upon this last few months and think, I missed out on this. I lost out on that. You know, we, we as a family, are, and, and we're not the only ones, but our youngest daughter, Grace, was supposed to graduate from uni. And um, I was so proud, right? I was, had my outfit ready. Well, I didn't, but I, in my head I did. In my, in my, you know, I had my outfit ready and we we're going to see her in a cap and gown, first one of our children to wear the cap and gown. And it didn't happen because that was supposed to happen in July. And, and we can look back and think, oh, you know, we missed out on that. We've missed out on the other. It was one of our oldest daughter, it was her 30th birthday. We didn't really be able to celebrate that very well. And, and other birthdays. And then, you know, different things that were our holiday in America that we were so looking forward to. Like most of you, you know, there's been things that you could list that we've missed out on. But instead of doing that, why don't we start to appreciate what we actually have? You know, learn to appreciate those things. Be thankful. You know, thankful, when I looked thankful up, it actually means 
to be pleased and relieved. Okay? So we ought to be pleased and relieved for the things that we have. And not dwelling on the things that we don't have and that we, we feel like we might have missed out on. Um, I think this, this period of time has given us, lockdown has given us a time to reevaluate things, to put things in perspective, to look th at things differently. And I think for me personally, it's made me really appreciate and value people. Because at the end of the day, they're the most important things. You know, our relationship with God and our relationship with each other, our friendships. Um, you know, things that we've probably taken for granted um, and we've thought are just normal were taken away from us, weren't they? We weren't allowed to meet together as a church. We weren't allowed to meet together as family. We weren't allowed to meet together as friends. And those things that were taken away and stripped away from us um, really start to become important. And so I think that first lesson, you know, that we, we kind of want to learn is to learn to appreciate, appreciate what we actually have and the value that we put on things should change. And it's changed for me, it certainly has changed, but I mean, I've always, always valued my friends, my family, my church, um, but more so now when it was kind of taken away a little bit from us. Um, you know, it's easy, isn't it, to list bad things that have happened this year because it's been a pretty rough year. It's been pretty, yeah, not very good. Um, I was going to say another word, um, but it's been a bit of a, a poo year, hasn't it? It hasn't been a very, very good year. Um, but in other ways, it's been amazing because if we learn from what we've been through, that's been good, that's been a good thing. And you know, right at the beginning of the year, you know when people are, uh, are looking towards and, and 2020, uh, you know, and, a new chapter, and oh man, it's supposed to be so good, new decade. And everybody on New Year's Eve saying what their, you know, their plans were and their hopes and their dreams, and lots of them haven't happened um, because of the pandemic that we've been in. And you know what, um, this last week, there was um, Piers Morgan retweeted something that Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, said right at the beginning. It was the 2nd of January 2020 and these were Boris Johnson's words. This is going to be a fantastic year for Britain. <laughs> How wrong? How wrong? He wasn't to know. We can't blame Boris. It wasn't his fault that this happened. Um, you know, we can't blame the Prime Minister. We like to blame people for, for things that have gone wrong. But um, So Piers Morgan just retweeted that and it made me smile. It really made me smile because Boris wasn't the only one. Um, he wasn't the only one who said this kind of thing. But this is going to be a fantastic year for Britain. Well, it turned out not to be quite so fantastic, didn't it? Um, you know, we, we kind of now have to, to like look back and we can laugh at that kind of thing really because we're kind of coming through it and um, we, we, we can kind of think well we, we maybe and hopefully are past the worst of it all and we can start to look to the future as things start to open up and, and get back to some kind of um, normality um, but there's a verse in Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 and it's the New Living Translation and it says this every time I think of you I give thanks to God. Now you could put that and you could say every time I think of my family or every time I think of my friends or every time I think of my church family and for me it will be Edge Church. I am passionate about our church and I believe that God has got a fantastic future for us. You know I stood at the beginning of this year like I say every year I say you know in church I'll say this is going to be a great year. It still can be church because we can learn lessons um, through lockdown can't we and uh, we could put that in and say every time I think of you I give thanks to my God. Do you know it, it kind of put things into a perspective in that we've started to realise that church is not a building. Church are you and I together okay now we may be in our separate homes having church still but that won't be for much longer it won't be forever um but judas smith a pastor in america who you know most of us know of judas smith said this i don't want to fight for a building 
to get together in. I want to fight for lives to be together with. How good is that? I'm going to say that again. It's worth listening to. I don't want to fight for a building to get together in. I want to fight for lives to be together with. That church is what it's about. It's not about a building, which is just as well, because we've been without a building, haven't we? Um, but it's about lives. It's about you. It's about you. You might feel as if you're being a little bit insignificant. You are not insignificant. You're important. You are important. And uh, it's just a matter of prioritising, isn't it? Prioritising things that are really important. Putting the right things into perspective and um, not dwelling on the things that we've lost or we feel that we've lost, but putting the right things at the top, you know, prioritising. Second lesson that we can learn through lockdown is this. Number two, you are favoured, not in capital letters, not forgotten. Okay? Lesson number two, you are favoured, not forgotten. Do you know what? It's easy, easy to feel a bit forgotten. Um, I think especially when we haven't been able to see each other, we haven't been able to get together um, in the ways that I've described earlier on, it's easy to feel forgotten. When you live in a, a house full of people like we do, um, there's always somebody around. It's very, very rare that you get a minute um, for one of us to have the house on our own. In fact, it's been, it's never happened during, during um, this last period of time. Um, but you might be living on your own um, and you might feel as if you've been forgotten. You know, it, it's difficult um, when you are on your, I can imagine it's difficult when you're on your own and you haven't got people around you to feel part of something. Um, but you know what? You are favoured, not forgotten. You are important. Can you imagine, when I was preparing this, I was thinking, I was thinking, hey, can you imagine when we got back together if we'd all forgotten each other? <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be awful, wouldn't it? Um, and it's just like, today, I was, I was out um, having coffee with a friend and somebody shouted, oh, the hello, Joy. And I'm going, who are they? Who are they? Now, to be fair, it wasn't that I'd forgotten them. It's that they had a mask on and I couldn't see their face and took her mask off and I went, oh, you you know but it kind of it, it all comes into this you know imagine if we all got back together in church and the first week we were all back together we're going like hey, who is she i've forgotten who she is can't remember hasn't been that long um but you know what during this time i can say thank goodness for facetime we haven't used it a lot i'm not the best um but we've used it to, in the earlier days to keep in touch with our um, our son and daughter-in-law, our grandchildren. You know, for those weeks when we weren't able physically to see outside of our own, anybody outside of your own household, thank goodness you could use FaceTime. Um, if you wanted to, you know, you might not have wanted to. Even for a dinosaur, a technophobe like me, it was possible to keep in touch. You know, it's been a time to learn new skills, hasn't it? You've got to look at it that way. I didn't know how to do FaceTime hardly before. Well, I kind of did, but I didn't really have the need to use it. Um, but I've learned that. I've learned that I can use FaceTime if I need to use FaceTime. Um, I promised myself at the beginning of it all, I was going to learn something new. You know, some, some friends and some people I've heard of have learned like a new language or they've learned how to bake cakes. Well, I can't bake cakes. Uh, I'm not very good with another language. Um, so I decided because I love arty things and arty crafty things, I decided I would learn to do calligraphy and I thought this is going to be my new skill, right? We are now, what, six months almost down the line? I've hardly done a thing. And uh, I started off all really keen, my pen, my inks, everything like that. And then I just didn't do it. I just gave up. And, um, and I thought today, when I was thinking about this, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, but getting back to this, during 2020, have you felt forgotten? I want you to know you are not forgotten by God. You are actually favoured. You know, favoured, not forgotten. That's important. I want you to remember that. Favoured, not forgotten. You know what favoured means? Favoured means preferred over anything or anyone else. 
So you are favoured by God. You are favoured, not forgotten. You are preferred over anything or anyone else. Forgotten, we all know what kind of forgotten means. Forgotten means unremembered. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says this in the NIV. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of anyone, because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Now the message version says it this way. Be strong, take courage, don't be intimidated. I love that. Don't give them a second thought. Because God, your God, your God, listen to this. He's striding ahead of you. He's right there with you. He won't let you down. He won't leave you. Church, you are not forgotten. Do you know, I love music and I love lots of different types of music. Um, my family laugh at me because I have got a big um, range of music styles that I love. I love a bit of country. I love a bit of uh, rap. I love rap, right? Would you believe it? Me, my age, 28, and I love rap. Um, I love it. But I love, oh, one of my favourite Christian singers is a, a man called Michael W. Smith. I absolutely love him. Now, my go-to song for this year, for this season, has been a song that Michael W. Smith wrote. And if you get the opportunity, if I was really clever with technical things, I would play it to you now, but I'm not. So, have a look, look it up. Look it up on YouTube. Michael W. Smith, and this song is called Sovereign Over Us. I'm going to read some of the words to you because it's so applicable for what I'm talking about. And it says this. There is strength within the sorrow. There is beauty in our tears. You meet us in our mourning with a love that casts out fear. You are working in our waiting. You are sanctifying us. When beyond our understanding, you're teaching us to trust. Your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You are with us in the fire and the flood. You are faithful forever perfect in love, you are sovereign over us. So remember that bit, you have not forgotten us. You are not forgotten, church. It goes on to say, you are wisdom unimagined. Who could understand your ways, reigning high above the heavens, reaching down in endless grace? You're the lifter of the lowly, compassionate and kind. You surround and you uphold me, and your promises are my delight. Even what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good and for your glory. Even in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You are working for our good and for your glory. Listen to this again. Even what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for our good. Even in the valley, you are faithful. You are working for our good. How good is that? God is sovereign over us. He's working just honestly for the best, for the best for us. So you are not forgotten. We are important to him. We haven't been forgotten. You know, God's working. He's working even during this time that we've been through. He's working for our good. Do you know the third lesson? Final lesson. We'll get them there. Final lesson. Number three. Lessons in lockdown number three, God is faithful. How simple is that? But God is faithful. You know that song, one of the lines said, even in the valley, he's faithful. We could track, we could change that, we could say, even in lockdown, he's faithful. In every situation, whatever your circumstance, church, God is faithful. People aren't always faithful. You know, people can let us down, they can disappoint us, and you might have had that experience. You know, we're all capable of letting each other down. We're all capable of disappointing uh, other people. But, but, God is always faithful, not just sometimes. He's not just faithful um, when he feels like it. God is always, always faithful. You know, we can turn around a bad situation and turn it for our good. 
Um, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20 says this, and I remember my mum saying this verse to us, and she'd been in an awful situation, and um, a horrible car, a car crash, and I remember say, her saying these words the day after. She said, um, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it says this, Don't you see what the enemy planned for evil? So the message says, Don't you see you, the enemy, planned evil against me, but God used those plans for my good. Some versions say what the enemy meant for evil, you turned it for good. I love that verse. I absolutely love it. It's one of those verses, a go-to verse, you know, when things aren't looking good and sometimes situations we bring on ourselves, they're not always brought on by anybody else. We can bring situations onto ourselves, but whatever situation we are in, however bad it is, God can turn it for his good. Do you know, our faithful God is a promise keeper. He doesn't disappoint us. He doesn't let us down. He doesn't break his promises. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, I've got a few verses, um, you know, this, this preach, but says this, in the, in the New Living Translation, it says, Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. He lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandment. What are you grateful for, church? What are you grateful for? Be grateful for God's faithfulness so far. He's a faithful God, absolutely faithful. You know, um, as we're emerging through lockdown, I would just encourage you to look up, lift your head up. You know, your countenance might be down. Lift your head up, look up, look ahead and believe the promises of God over your life. I want you to know you are precious, you are loved, you are valued and you're important. That deserves a yay, doesn't it? You know, if I was doing an emoji, I would have like the, uh, the celebration, the celebration emoji on there. You are precious. God wants you to remember when he makes you a promise, he's a promise keeper. And he, you, are prom you are precious, you are loved, you are valued and you are important. You know, listen to, oh, I love this, Psalm 85, verse 1. And I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. And it, I, could, it, I just love it. It says, Lord, your love has poured out so many amazing blessings on our land. Amazing blessings, not just any blessing. Amazing blessings. Okay, you've restored Jacob's destiny from captivity. Oh, wow. Never forget, church, God's amazing blessings. Absolutely amazing. He's faithful. He's constant. He's for us, not against us. Isn't that good to know? He's for us and he has not forgotten us. So, just as I'm coming to a close, it says in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, listen to this in the message. It says, be strong, take courage, don't be intimidated, don't give them a second thought, because God, your God, oh man, I love it. I read this before, he's with you, he's right there with you, he won't let you down, he's there. What an amazing God we serve. What lessons have we learned from lockdown? What lessons? I hope you remember those three lessons. You know, we might remember back and think, oh, I remember, I remember this from lockdown. I remember, I'll tell you what, which one I remember the most. Queuing for toilet rolls, queuing for shopping and running out of toilet rolls. We have a five, uh, family of five living in here. A pack of four toilet rolls wouldn't last you a day, right? They just go. And, um, well, they might last a day, but they wouldn't last much longer. And I remember getting excited over getting big packs of toilet rolls. And one day I got a pack and Hannah got a pack and we had two great big packs of toilet rolls. How exciting is that? You know, but there's more important things to remember from lockdown, isn't there? You might remember um, queuing outside of, you, you know, your local supermarket. I remember one, one afternoon we queued for 45 minutes to get into Asda to do some food shopping. Um, are there the things you're going to remember from lockdown? Well, yeah, we will remember those things and we'll look back and we'll laugh about those things. And there are some, some other things that might have happened in lockdown that maybe you remember with sadness, you know. But let's remember 
our three lessons today. Let's remember to appreciate what we have. That was lesson number one. Lesson number two, remember you are favoured, not forgotten. And remember number three, God is faithful. All of it. You know what? One thing that happened during, I'm, at the, I'm finished now, but one thing that happened during lockdown was um, the Yee Day, wasn't it? And I'm just pulling off this. I've got a quote from the newspaper. I absolutely love our Queen. Right? I love her. And um, the Yee Day, she made a speech. And um, one sentence she said was, never give up, never despair. And I cut it out. Cut it out of the paper. It's there. And I stuck it in my notepad. And I thought, you know what? That's good. That's good, Your Majesty. Go and remember that. Never give up never despair you know i just pray that um as we are coming through this time that you can look back on those lessons and think i have learned something good during this period okay that's it i've kind of kept my, my time scale a bit better this time um so some people would be pleased about that um i just want to say have a fantastic week we pray god's blessing over you pray that you have um, a great time and, and in the week ahead and we are believing that for us church, for you as an individual, for you as a family, for you as part of Edge Church, wherever you're from, whatever church you are attached to, the best is still to come. Okay, have a great week. Bye.